Uh, this is Jeremiah 3.15. This is what it says that, Then I'll give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. And that is who you are. Not only to me, but to this generation. For me, I really don't know where I would be today. I'm one person who likes, not like, but I love looking good. I love dressing well. I love, you know, when it comes to shoes, when it comes to bags, when it comes to makeup, when everything about me. But the people we see on the streets, they are dying. I was rotting inside. Like a lot was going on. A lot. That I may not be, to sh I may not be able to share that whole story right now. But I was rotting inside. And yet I would dress up, get into the car, I wear my nice makeup. I step out and smile for people. I would just fake smiles. Meanwhile, I've written books. I'm invited in churches to minister. And of course, this is God. You go and minister to people. I, I now have a healing gift that, of course, I'm going to talk about that. That, that intuition, the leading of the spirit, that he tells me sometimes he leads the pain to my body. Like if maybe he has a pain in, a, in his tummy, I feel the pain. That is the leading of the spirit. But with all that, I was dying. I needed someone to hold my hand. I needed, I always say that. Whether it offends people or not, you're, you're my Naomi. God sent. Whether the world wants to believe it or not, that is who you are to me. And so I appreciate you for today's session. And um, while you shared... This is what came to, to my spirit. The Bible says in Romans, this is Romans 8, 16, that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. And he goes ahead to say in verse 16 that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits. So for me, that is, it's not an, it's not a, it's not an outside in thing. It's an inside. It, it starts with the inside. That what you feel inside, it, it's what comes out. And uh, it also gets me, uh, when he talks about this verse, that, that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirits. What I get is that that is the primary way the Lord lead, uh, leads us. So we see the visions, we see the prophecies, we see the, um, these other ways, the dreams. To me, those are secondary. And the reason I say they are secondary is that, first of all, the Bible affirms it, and then the devil can easily manipulate them. The devil can give you a vision. He can give you a dream. He can give you uh, uh, a dream, a vision, and what? It's a, uh, yes. He can manipulate all of them. But the spirit, your spirit inside, the devil cannot access it. And the peace. It cannot. It's the peace. And when that intuition comes with peace, you talked about it, it's, uh, it's contrary to, to what, um, it's the opposite of what uh, the devil gives you. He gives you fear. Like when you're in the middle of making a decision, you have that fear in you. You do not even know what to do. You do not, like, you have that fear inside of you. And so uh, that is what I have learned from today. And I'm just grateful. I'm this person who has never held a mic to speak, especially after personal growth. But today, today, um, I don't know. <laughs> yes, and, um, and maybe uh, concerning also, let me just say this. I know many, of, actually all of you don't know that I used to stammer. You do not know. Mwekanga no kwekanga, I used to stammer. You know my testimony, the freedom seekers, you know my testimony. These days I make videos, YouTube. Neunya no kwe unya. By the time I came here, I, of course when I'm ministering, in, I, I, of course that is God. When I'm ministering in church, I do not stammer. But when I'm talking to people like my normal life, I used to stammer. But ever since I joined the Mentorship Academy, I don't even know how it's like... How I stopped stammering. Of course, okay, I do struggle with the little words here and there. The fact that I was, um, I was just by myself. You know my story and uh, being alone. 
you're you're not even growing anymore you, like personal growth you're not reading you're not speaking to people somehow somewhere along that line you find yourself that uh you're in that place where you you forget words somehow your tongue yes siba actually i got those dreams so many times nga my tongue um pastor jessica is one of the women i love i and i look up to you're also one of them of course the two of you pastor jessica and you but i would get those dreams where pastor jessica was like untying my my like a rope tied around my tongue and she was untying it that is the spirit of stammering but ever since i joined this mentorship academy neunya no kweunya neunya i honor you and i love you so much together with uh, mwami sabiti i love you so much one day i'll tell my story and you'll know why i love you with all my heart of all the men that i have met live along the pastors that is now another story but i love him and uh, it's really a long story one day i will testify <laughs> thank you so much coach bahati for for always sparing your time to talk to us for always sparing your time to pour into us for is genuinely loving on us for the words you've given us the words of wisdom you've talked about intuition you talked about the dream I actually have a dream i had to tell you i don't know what happened i forgot to tell you but i think i'll tell it to you privately <laughs> yes yeah i had to tell you a certain dream but what had really stood out for me is this sense is not something it's not something that told me something it is it is god on the other part partnering with you and what has stood out for me is when you work with god uh, ever since i joined worship harvest <laughs> and uh, coach fiona it, worship harvest teaches you how to read the word i over loved praying for me what but the more you go into the word the more you understand what intuition is the more you read the bible i have observed it so much every time because every day i have certain chapters i have to read but after i read those chapters after i say my prayers i feel a certain covering i feel i understand i feel i'm more attentive to the intuition than before i pray or before i say my prayers so if i now, now at least now i know if i partner with god if i accept the intuition if i focus on it if i pay attention I'm working with God and it can outwork all other things. You don't just need all other things that here ring the water the thing because sometimes the, the physical eyes don't see what the spiritual eyes see but when once you partner once you focus on that intuition and understand it and give it time you can be able to see far from what you can see with your physical eyes. Other than that I love you so much and I love you coach Tim. I love you so much. Thank you. Good evening women of God. This is my first time here though I've been uh, with uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, though I was part of Transformers. I dropped out but the spirit keeps pulling me come back come back and here I am. And I'm so grateful to Madam Hilda. She has really really mentored me. She has given me strength. I had my own weakness of which I still have but I'm getting out of it. and uh, i'm so glad that uh, now we you have included in the the spiritual growth this this is so so wonderful and i'm so grateful for it though i have a busy schedule at this time but i will try i will always try and come yeah thank you okay thank you so much for me today as if you're preaching great to my soul and what i got was to focus yeah onto my to the to the in sixth sense and um cause it will amplify my convictions and also to trust it maybe i've not been trusting it i've been having the i'm at crossroads because i'm not trusting it uh, yes now i've learned that and i believe i'm going to make better decisions Thank you so much. What you want is to get the eye contact between the person that you want to sell from your service, okay? I want people to see me that is why I put it on social media. And that is why people so I saw it on 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 Instagram. Oh, I saw it on Facebook. So what I want you it's not to just to see, but I want you to focus. So what am I going to do? 
with focus. Okay? Now, we have been doing different formats of focus, you know, creating graphics that are appealing to people, okay? And then Taylor making a message that is appealing to people. I remember when uh, Balondemu, Balondemu, many of you don't know, he's a silent member, he's in Kamoli forever, but he's one of the very first, first person to pay for the mentorship and he's 50 years. And this is what he told me. He was actually 52 by the time he started the mentorship, so he should be 55 right now. And he came to my inbox and told me, I saw this program on Facebook, and um, one thing, one sentence made sense out of everything, that it is never too late for me to pursue my dream. One sentence like this hooked him. So he didn't see, but he focused on that sentence. And it's possible that if I had written all the good words, the make, full, the make people feel good words, you become a mentor. And so this man, you get some freedom. I don't know where mentors get freedom from because mentorship and life coaching is one of the hardest jobs. Because you're dealing with human beings. Hello? They have emotions, they don't know what they want, and when they know what they want, they don't have the power to do it, and you have to push them. So what is the hardest? People sell life coaching as, ah, you become a life coach, then you go to the beach and see it, spend time with your family, and, uh, you know, get money, let money come to your laptop. It is never going to happen like that. I am better off giving you the truth. It is hard work. We do sales, and we are the first marketing people. Before we even hire others, we market first. So he told me this one sentence got him to look at that post twice and immediately that night he sent the money and he got into the mentorship that even when he is not that forthcoming and very inclusive and what the milestones that he has achieved he opened up a children's center and he's doing mentorship for human resource managers around kampala and he's doing mega things and he's a good public speaker right now and he's like you know what I am so glad I trusted my intuition when I felt like signing up for this the first time I saw it. So you don't want just people to see. You want people to focus, to have a second look. This thing about how many of us like screenshotting things? Uh -huh. Do you know why we screenshot things? It's because now we are focusing. We are not just looking. Otherwise, for everything that we look or see, we keep scrolling. Because... Oh, I can find it any time that I want. Sometimes they're like, I can always go back to their page and see it. But there are certain things that are outstanding. And that I understood when Mbadja Sean, I had an interview with him. I hope most of you can be able to watch it. Actually, it's airing tonight, but you'll be able to watch it on YouTube. And he was like, eventually, he called his saloon House of Extras. If it's as in he will do something totally different from everyone else that is doing so. That means you can go to his page and screenshot away and you'll be like, eh, akavidi kanonja kagala. No laba kabobu, no laba kawamu. No laba, and you'll keep screenshotting and you're like, one day I will go to him. But one day never comes. But that means you saw. Now that means, according to us that were there when we were talking about the lead generator, the nurturing and the conversion of the clients, that means that the lead generator is pouring in a lot. Now he has to have the power to convert because the conversion has in dialogue, huh? and it has a narrow input. So that means the people that are coming and are seeing and are looking are so many. That is the focus that we talked about. You want many people to focus, for many people to notice your product. But do you remember when they notice, they have to stay with you a little longer because now when they notice, for example, most people when they see one of my reels or one of my TikToks, they will get hooked and watch a hundred of my TikToks in that one day. And then they will tell me, I found you, I found you just today, but I have watched over a hundred of your TikToks. You get it? That means it's something that resonates with them. It's not just a normal reel that they saw and they passed by. But when they saw it, they came to my page and they watched a hundred more. Now that person is hooked. So that means that my offer should be tailor-made in a frame so that... They, do you know why we frame pictures? It's to improve focus. Yeah. Because if you just place a picture on the wall... Like it just looks so redundant. But when you put a frame on it, you are focusing on the picture and eradicating everything else that is outside of the picture.
So that means you have to be able to eradicate everything else that is outside and be able to make sure that they really, really focus. And when they focus, this is what happens. It creates a belief in their mind. I want you to go downward, okay? It creates a belief. We come from focus on your prospects. When they focus on you, when you frame well, whatever it is that you're selling, you go down to creating a belief, okay? And a belief about the offer. A belief about the offer of, ah, I think it's good. I think it can work for me. I think I need this dress. I think I need this soap. I think I need this, uh, this mentorship. Or I think I need this course. Because part of what we are going to do, and this was in the VIP, uh, in, in the VIP class, but now I'm bringing it to general mentorship, the course creation. Still, we are going to do the course creation together. So that you can see how to, to, tailor, to bring your knowledge and tailor make it into a course that people can be able to buy. Because you have something that other people don't have. So what's that unique bankable gift that you have that you can actually turn into knowledge? Do you know that you can create a course about forgiveness? You can create a course about emotional healing. You can create a course about, you know, recovering from depression. How many people are depressed in this world? There are so many. And someone will be willing to pay $30, $50 or $100. And just take away a program of, a, of like 10 videos and watch it. And it's a framework. You're giving them a framework how to overcome it, not just normal. Because again, your, in order for your product to stand out, it must have the ingredients that make it stand out. Okay? So you're not going to give me ordinary information and you think I'm going to recommend you to anyone. No, it's, that is why the longevity of clientele is very important. That when you hook me, can you treat me so well and give me enough good things so that I can talk about you everywhere I go? And that is what Mbaja told me. That his, uh, his incense was for every, when someone goes out, that someone will ask, where did, did you do that hair from? And then they will say, I did it from Mbaja. And all of a sudden they will want to come because of the extras that is in the hair. So what are your extras? Yes, you all sell dresses, but it's possible that we can all sell dresses and sell them differently and all have different extras. You can sell dresses and when you sell to me long enough and you know my body and you know what is good for me, I will get hooked. I'll be like, she even understands what is good for me. Okay? She will even recommend. And let me tell you, I love people that sell something or don't convince you but persuade you, but with a lot of confidence. You know how people can trick you into doing things very quickly? Have you ever seen, I've trusted, uh, I've learned to trust doctors, and that is one of the doctors that we met at Kosu last, uh, last, um, uh, last Wednesday. You know someone who speaks and says, we have time. We can still, because, I mean, the time has gone, but we can still give it more time and see what happens. As in, you're not here to grab my pocket. Do you know there are doctors who seem like they're here to grab your pocket? As in, if we don't do it this night, it is too bad. And they will give you all the bad scenarios. And they will, and they will fidget. And yes, some people will actually uh, give in. But some people who are like us, the moment you want to arm, twi to, to arm twist me, I will walk away. Why? Because I'll be restless. And that is what I want to show you. That when you create a belief in someone, that belief creates faith. Now, around faith is where we're going to have two categories. That belief can either create faith or it can create doubt in your product. When, because doubt and, and faith are beliefs, right? They are both beliefs towards something. When you doubt something or when you have faith in something, you have beliefs, but the beliefs are different, negative or positive, okay? In that same product. And the doubt has a negative outcome. When you start doubting someone, I want you to be very honest. If you have ever seen someone sell you something and then you start, you, you waited for them to speak and you're like, let me listen, okay? And now when you start listening, you start getting doubts according to the many words they speak and then the, the statistics they are giving you, like they seem so unrealistic, you switch off eh? and you're like, you know what, let me, let me just not be a bad person, let me wait for them to finish their speech mm -hmm. in peace. 
and then they, you, you will let them finish their speech. But re remember, you switched off. That means you do not have even a single ounce of energy of getting your hands and taking them into your pocket or even promising that we can have another meeting or even promising I love your goods and I really, I mean, I would love them if you can. You don't even have that the ounce to negotiate. Now, that is what doubt creates. You cannot negotiate. You cannot, uh, as in, you don't want anything to do with that. What you want is for that person to stand up and go or to get off the call. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Oh, it's me that just, uh, that just looks at that. The faith is created, and even the Bible talks about it, mm -hmm. by hearing. Mm -hmm. Another person recommends yes. the belief that is created yes. in you is faith. Yes. Another person disses the service. Oh, the person becomes too convincing. I know all you need to wait you get a new. And all of a sudden you have a bias and you have a doubt about yeah. their services. Mm. Wow. Okay. So now that at, at least that is very real. That is something that you can actually see. Okay. So let's go down because faith creates a feeling. And doubt creates a feeling. The feeling doubt creates is the feeling of flee for your own, <laughs> run for your own life, or just switch off or cut off. But faith creates a feeling of anticipation of how will it feel to, to, use this, uh, the, to use this product? How will it feel for me to put on that dress? How will it feel when he's the one in theater working on me? And that is where brand influencing works. Even when I came to give birth, I think it became because my husband has an intong as well. And when he said that this is it, Plan A has not worked. Plan B is we are going to this doctor and we are going now. And in, in my heart, I had the peace of mind because I was already in prayer. I was bleeding out. I was, in the, I was like a cow that has been cut. And our first guy is like, you know, I'm not around. Let the midwives help you. And he's like, you know what? We are going this side. And we went, and that side, we got a lot of peace and God did a lot of, as it was a very trying moment, a very terrible moment that anything that would have missed slightly, something wrong would have happened. But the faith, because, you know, when someone talks to you, when someone, you know, nurtures you, when someone follows you through, and sometimes when you have had someone else, because I had actually watched Dora Mwima and she had given birth there. And I was like, okay, so if Dora Mwima has given birth there and it was an emergency, what are the chances that they're actually good? So you, you, you realize you're building all these things while his intuition is saying here. And I feel the peace in my heart. And everything shows the same direction. And it doesn't matter how much money you're, you're, you're charged. All that matters is you felt good and you felt the peace while you were consuming whatever it could. So everything is consumed. You know, sometimes we don't know that everything is for sale. Like my husband says, that he can sell everything. Apart from your, <laughs> your wife and, you <laughs> and your mother, everything else is for sale. Uh, uh, the children are going. <laughs> the children are going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so let's go to feeling. Feeling is very, let me, just like I said, people buy because they feel like it. You have gone to a salon to make that hair because you feel like it. Or because you saw another person that looked so well in that. Or you've I've even held your hair like that because you saw another person. So you feel like it and so you go ahead and do it. How many women bought pink dresses when it came to Barbie? Hi Barbie, hi Barbie. Everyone is buying a pink dress. And guess what? They were bringing a movie that had weird things. And when people were disappointed about the movie... But they had gone through the whole wahala of buying clothes, of, of uh, being what? But they were, promi they were promoting pink gays, pink yes, being pink throughout. And so many people fell into that trend. But it was a marketing frenzy. And they made a whole commotion globally between the month of January and now. Do you know how much they have made? Trillions of dollars. Out of just a, or a campaign, they promise a movie that is never coming, and then a movie comes, everyone is disappointed. The first movie in the theater, everyone is disappointed about the movie. No one wants to hit the theater to watch the movie. But guess what? Because they had a feel-good sell, 
that they did not have to convince you. All you had to do is go to the shop, buy your own pink dress, look and you do your own pictures, do your own makeup, look like a baby and take a picture and put it on social media and guess what? Even the algorithms of uh, of, of Instagram, they will pick on that whoever put up a, a baby picture, their algorithm and their viewers hit millions. Because it was in the algorithm that whoever has anything, even if it was a hashtag Barbie, even right now it's still trending. Mm -hmm. Hashtag, you, you will hit. Like they will show your reel to everyone. Why? Because for them, they are about making you feel good so that you can buy more of their products. So that means the feelings are very important. Now, when we go to the feelings, we say that we go to the anticipation. But I want you to look. Anticipation comes from the faith side. Eh? Let's look at the doubt side. Anxiety. When you become doubtful about a product, then you start being anxious. <laughs> I want you. I know. Never have turned another product that is not that same product. You want to run for your dear life. Then you start even baptizing people. Oh yeah, abo geranyo. Aba tunde ngato. Aba tunde ngoye. Aba tunde. As in, as in, you will baptize them that not because they are that. You will find that they are actually selling good products. Okay, but because now you have doubt. You're biased, so now you're anxious. You're like, Mama, they, ate, like, they will speak. At they don't have to speak too much. They don't have to. When someone speaks too much, then you're like, what are you hiding? What, what are you not saying? And so the doubt comes in, and then you're anxious. You feel like you're wasting your time. You feel like you want to go, but they're still speaking. Okay? And then now the anticipation is an energy. And the outcomes of that is the desire. What, what you desired is what has come to pass. You're on the faith side. Okay? It builds an energy when the outcome that was desired. Because when you start feeling, you start envisioning. When you start feeling, you start seeing yourself. How many of us have seen reels of people doing things and you start envisioning yourself doing it? Maybe buying that same cup or buying. You already have like a dozens of cups, eh? but you want that particular cup. Or you want that particular glass so that you can put in ice cubes and you put in milk and you mix it like this with like a long straw and then you take while you're minding your business. How many of us have wanted to buy uh, laptops just to make it sit there and take a real like togende day and be there like you're, you're eating your fruits and you're minding your business and then you're not thinking about any other laptop but you're thinking about a Mac laptop, MacBook. Ah. Am I the one who said that? But it has to be a Mac book. Why? Because in of course, because they have to see the the, the apple gundi, you know. But who told us that these these are the things that have to be done? No. But let me tell you, the world is creating its own trends, and influencers now are creating their own trends. And what they whatever they love is what they uh, what is sold. Whatever they don't love is not sold because no one is going to show up with something. Okay, so you realize that from anticipation comes the desired feeling of finally, I'm also putting on this dress. And finally, I can also tag the person I bought it from as if they paid you. <laughs> or, or I can use this soap. And then who remembers uh, Downey, uh, the time that Downey was the thing? Uh -huh. Who remembers, as in, there's so many... There's so many good trends have gone, and then you're like, you know, and I go into the supermarket, I'll buy downy. How does it smell? How it's money? There are many. It's money there is for boys, it's money there is for girls. Money. How many people have, have bought washing machines when they, <laughs> you know? But the thing is, when you finally get it, you get this the desired outcome. And guess what? You will wash once in that washing machine, or you will use that soap once, and you will never feel like using it again. Like all the stamina will flee away. Yeah. You know, it's like having a crush on someone and you telling them I'm crushing on you. <laughs> it's like that demon, it runs away. <laughs> the moment you tell them, hey, Kale, I've, I've always seen you. Yeah, I, I really love you. I really be chibi chibi. And then, hey, be my be with day. I know they are. They start, <laughs> they start looking ugly. <laughs> so, do you see how we are in the consumerism generation? It's dri driven by consumerism. But again, businesses are thriving. And that is where we have to hook in and be able to make our businesses thrive. Okay? 
and not be in the frenzy of consumption all the time ourselves okay we become the better us that who are not consumed with the urge of consuming all the time but we are consumed with the urge of contribution all the time so make those offers create those courses create that product create that opportunity and make sure that you sell it you put it out there but make sure that the belief is good the faith is created the feelings are tapping into the faith there is anticipation and all of a sudden there is enthusiasm than the energy that helps people or, or, or go uh, swipe their cards someone swipes their card so quickly Psh, the money is gone gets into their pocket they give you cash they do a bank transfer they do a mobile money transfer things have been made easy okay but only if you go through that trend but on the other side when you come to anxiety anxiety kumala mu amanyi do you know anxiety make kumala mu amanyi bwe kumala mu amanyi ni wangu ba dozi lina musawo so wele mugamba obo so lokoma wencha oba nja chigulencha and then when you gamba nja chigulencha toli chigula and then you because it's like you know you've slept on it and now you're asking yourself is it that important will i die without it and all of a sudden you don't you don't buy it okay so for tonight i want to stop here i don't want to go any further than that but i just wanted to share that so that at least we can know how to be able i know that now you have homework to go and be able to apply this on your own businesses coaching products and even when it comes to videos by the way when you create videos do you know that you can look at someone once and get tired of watching their video before you even hear from them or you can even watch without the volume and you don't feel like putting on the volume <laughs> let me tell you everything i must tap into the feelings that is why i talk about lifestyle and etiquette that how you appear determines whether i am going to listen to you even for three seconds and if you're not appealing to me I am stressed. Again, now would join you get stress in dala. Can you work on yourself? Can you look good? Wanji? Looking good does not mean makeup. Looking good does not mean expensive. But you can look well put together. Then there is looking at someone when I now can't call white. Oh, you are gonna call a cotta ku screen. Oh, my ambeko. I mean, my jokuru will say, I tell you, oh, Olega, come, Kali, one, sir, come, Kali, one, Guru, no gamba, Mukama, you know, you know, and that alone is enough. Packaging is very important. So, and you are a brand, so you must package yourself well. Then I let me rest. <laughs> I will not. I will not finish. So uh, you talked about the last one, the branding. Recently, um, I think last week on Sunday, I work for an organization that did, deals in leadership. So they sponsor uh, students. So they usually organize uh, fellowships uh, for all their university students. And so this time it was like a, flesh, a freshers uh, fellowship and. Uh, you know, when you work in the same organization, kind of people get familiar with you. Yeah. But like you said, uh, I've come out boldly and with an apologetic that this is who I am. So now they, they treasure me. They would, so they would be like, this is our keynote speaker. So <laughs> in that week, I remember the other Friday, I came, I had uh, these simple twists. So they send me an email of late now it's email. They're no longer coming. Molly, we want you. <laughs> yeah, they send the email. So they send the email and I'm like, ah, I'm going to speak. So I talked to a few friends of mine. They have called me to speak. But this is a workspace thing, you know. So I start telling them, ha, ah, now this guy here. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know these students. And inside side of me, I'm unsettled. But I would compromise with that. I'd be like, can these people, I know them. I couldn't settle. Like at somewhere in the middle, I was like, "Yeah, I think it's okay. I can go with my hair." When I went back home, <laughs> sleeping, <laughs> I was like, "Me, Molly, to show up with this hair? It's very impossible." So I wake up, and my husband is there, and started removing the hair. It's like I take out a video of the judge, and I'm like, "I can't show up like this." Like I just felt so uncomfortable to show up like that. Went in the shower in the middle of the night and removed the twists. <laughs> And because, you know, it's easier for me to work on my natural hair. I just worked on it and I dressed. And so when my husband was, I went with him. So when he stood to introduce me, he was like, look at the youngest woman in the house. Who can tell that she has two children? Look at how she's looking. 
<laughs> so that alone also boosted me before even showing up. But I also already, I had gained my confidence already because I felt I'm looking good. Yeah. I felt from my hair yeah. to my dressing. Yeah, I was like, I'm looking good already. So, and that impressed the student because it's today they give me the feedback forms. And some of them were like, she's looking youthful. She was on point. And as much as we're giving also about the topic I talked about, but they are complimenting the, yes, how I looked. So then I was like, if I had compromised with my twists. And you know, freshers, most of them came with their twists. And I was like, I'm, I was going to be on the same level. Yo. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, we talked about branding. Nancy Jokila, when I call the blazer and a soaker, I asked Madame Hill that helped me. I knew I'm buried them. But I blazer and a tunda. Nobody are young and Jagger lady. Jayaba Demujan Jagger, same color. Nan tunda be ten years changing a shiguayo. Ne blazer and a token in Ambaneda. Catching no choice. It was so amazing. I'm so grateful to be here. Actually, I've been with, I've never been here physically because uh, there was a group that she had created, but I dropped out. And I'm so grateful to be here again. And I thank God that I'm here. I couldn't expect me actually here to be here with you, but I'm so grateful. And I hope that I will be learning more and more every day. And I hope I feel like this is a family that I really wanted, and I'm so grateful that you're all friendly. And I pray to God that we shall learn more and more. When I came for the first class, I remember this first statement when we are coach Hilda was like, "In this kind of a job, we are looking for fulfillment. No money will come, but what matters most." Last week, one of my friend went to my Facebook page, and she had to. Sh screenshot to do to screenshot all the information after she had to send it so I was a bit co happy and then on sales I love when she's talking about when someone does for you and you feel like going back. Yeah when I was during my first pregnancy it was not I didn't face any difficulty but when it came to giving birth it was somehow another story. But what I remember is this midwife. And I feel like going back for my second born. But now there is how the lady convinced me. No, already. <laughs> <laughs> when the, con the, the conception gum. comes. Yeah. <laughs> she feels like conceiving. Yeah, yeah I have to give birth to another. <laughs> yeah, the whole lady prayed. With, the way she took me as a friend, as a sister, she could say, Carol, pull it. So, like, I felt good, I felt loved. <laughs> so, even doing something with a passion. So, I feel like going back. 